Hi, it's Kelly here, and uh, if you are having any difficulties with sleeping, or maybe your children are having trouble sleeping, you're going to want to watch this video. I've come up with a, a cutting-edge breakthrough on helping people to sleep better. And uh, if, by the way, if you've seen this video that I made recently already, you can skip this one because this is going to be pretty much the same thing. I just wasn't totally happy with it, so I wanted to reshoot it. Um, so anyway, you know, it might be, it could be any number of reasons why you can't sleep. And I'm going to explain to you why this works first. Um, and by the way, uh, I want you to know that I'm the author of, of that book there, The Doctor Cures Cancer. That's the book in Russian, they tell me. <laughs> and also this book here, uh, Is There a Question That Heals Instantly? And if you're interested in any of them, there'll be titles down there at the bottom where you can check it out on Amazon and find out more about it. So let's get to it. Um, recently, I was doing some research <clears throat> on the brain and got to looking at, at uh, the spinal fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid that moves around, you know, through the brain and, and down the spine and back. And found out that we have four ounces of spinal fluid. And this, all, this is all going to connect to your ability to sleep. And Although we have four ounces of it in our body, our body is actually making something like 16 to 20 ounces of it a day. And most of it at night or, or while we're sleeping. And it turns out we have these like rivers, two layers of rivers that flow across the entire tops and side of the brain and, and possibly at the bottom. And they might be like the Everglades, I'm not sure, where they are constantly cleaning out the brain cleaning, cleaning, cleaning into what's called the glymphatic system that connects to the lymphatic system. And what it's doing is cleaning out the dead cells and anything else that's, you know, waste products that, that might have developed in the brain at any particular time. So it's moving along. It's moving, moving, moving. And how is it moving? Because that's important. Um, we have in this third ventricle of our brain, which is located about here or so, um, in, the, in the middle, excuse me, um, and it has these little cilia, which are like smaller than hairs, or one hundredth the uh, diameter of, of our, the hair on our head. And they move in, in concert with each other to move the fluid. Um, it was back in the 60s where doctors Krieger and Smith at the University of California did a study to see, well, what moves it? How does it move? And is it affected by ions? And they tested both positive and negative ions. And they found that the positive ions slowed the cilia down. And not only that, but they started moving not in concert. They didn't move together as a unit. And sometimes they developed sticky substances on them that would impair their ability to move and at around 600 or so they would stop they would stop moving but if they they if these cilia are exposed to negative ions the cilia will go rather than 900 beats a minute will go up to 1200 beats a minute um, now just so you get a reference point for that when we go to the beach the ocean waves generate a lot of negative ions like 10,000 negative ions per centimeter per second. And the same thing with a waterfall and the same thing in the woods. Uh, I think in the woods it's about 2,500, maybe 5,000 uh, per, per second. And a waterfall would be 5,000. And, and this is the reason why we just are fascinated by waterfalls and we love being at the ocean and being in the deep forest because yet the, the, positive, the negative ions are so abundant. Now, if you go into an office space or a store like Target or Walmart, you'll find, if you measure the negative ions, you might find it's down to 100 or even zero. I find particularly Target. I don't, I rarely go to Target, but when I go in there, it's like, oh, it's, after, it doesn't take long, I start feeling creepy. I do not like it. So, the, the, the positive ions are high and the negative ions are very, very low. So this tells us that the fluid in our brain is not getting moved fast enough. So it starts to get cloudy and stagnant and, and gunky and, and maybe causes stinking thinking, you know, because it's not getting washed out completely. 
So we, we want to introduce uh, negative ions, and I found a way to do that, and this has worked tremendously. I, I've used this, I've seen it with my own eyes with a child who had autism, and he was <coughs> starting to go into to a total meltdown mode. He, he was in the back of my car, and his mother was with him, and he just started kicking the seat, and he started going nuts. All right? And I, I had a, a miniature version of, of what I'm going to share with you, and I was hand spinning it. And I turned around, and I spun it, and the child, within a couple seconds, just calmed down completely. His mother was stunned. She said that normally when he starts kicking the seat and going like that, he goes berserk. And it calmed him right down. And he stayed calmed down. But now I'm going to tell you how you can do this on a larger scale all the time so you don't have to spin it with your hands. All right? So, and this works with people who are what they call uh, neurotypical uh, or, you know, as, as opposed to neurodivergent. So either way... Uh, this seems to work. People write, have written to me over and over again telling me that they, it really helps them to sleep. So what you're going to do to make these ions is very, very simple. You're going to do it one time and it will be, uh, it, it's one and done. And it will work years and years and years and years. All right. <laughs> so it's beautiful. What you do is you get a copper wire. Now this copper wire, and there are different thicknesses of your copper wire, thicker is, is generally better. Ten might be too thick, uh, but uh, you know, this is an 18 gauge. Ten is thicker, the, the, thick, the, the lower the, the number, the gauge, the thicker it is. And this wire, is, which has been abused already, it's already been twisted. So what you're going to do is to take a, a piece of wire and you're going to measure your ceiling fan. So you can also do this on record players. Um, you can, or you can dangle them down, you know, from say a, a clothing rack that you might hang clothes up on, you know, uh, and and then put a fan blowing on it. But you're going to take your copper wire that's on a spool. But first, you're going to measure your ceiling fan length, and you're going to then take the, a spool. Of, I take a, a, a string of copper wire that's twice that length because you're going to bend it in half. And the reason you're doing that is is that copper's energy runs only in one direction in the wire. Don't ask me which direction it runs in, but it doesn't matter after you get done doing what, what I'm going to suggest here. So you bend it in half, and you're not going to bend it perfectly in half. You're going to have a loose end. You can snip off the, the longer end. And then you're going to insert it into your uh, power drill and tighten it down. So you're going to loosen it up and then tighten it down. I find putting the, 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 the looped end is easier to put in there, but it doesn't matter. And then you're going to hold the other end here. Imagine that my hand is a pliers there just to hold it. And then you're going to gently, 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 uh, here's the button right here, the finger button, right where they're around tapping. Right there, you're going to gently squeeze it, and it takes a little practice, and it'll start twisting and twisting and twisting. You're going to let it keep twisting until you feel it start to buckle, or you notice that it's starting to buckle, and stop. And then you're going to do that for each one of the blades on your ceiling fan, and you could uh, trim them down, you know, put them next to each other, and trim them down so they're all the same length, because when you twist it, it's going to shorten them up for maybe a couple inches. And, and, and so they're all the same length. Uh, I like to put the, 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 the looped end towards the center of the fan and the other end at the other, you know, the, the, the open end at the other end. I don't know if it makes a difference or not. Um, you can let me know if you, you, if you want to experiment with it. Um, so then you tape it down. Lengthwise, you put tape, you know, packing tape the entire length of your copper on each blade. And then you turn it on. Now if you're using a record player, you're going to take your copper wire here and make it into a, a semicircle. Um, open. It's good to have it open a little bit. Uh, and tape it down securely and have different lengths. 
So a smaller one, a larger one, and you can put three, put five, whatever you want on your record player and turn it on high. It won't be as strong as the ceiling fan because the ceiling fan goes faster. Um, and uh, so, oh, and by the way, I, I, the reason I'm pausing is I was just remembering that you're, they're now, it's now available where you can buy small ceiling fans that, that uh, there's a light bulb. You screw it into the, into the light socket. And, and they're small, but that's all right. You can put the, the, the copper wires on there. So if you don't have a ceiling fan, you don't have a record player, that's another option for you. Uh, there's also something called the, the uh, multi-wave oscillator disc. You can see my other videos about that, multi-wave oscillator discs. And um, you can get them with a little hole in the center. And you can put those on, on like table fans and standing fans. Those are even more powerful. But let's get you started with, with these uh, ceiling fans. Um, so you turn it on and turn it on high, you know, pull the chain, whatever it is, you know, however many times, that, that, or, or if it, maybe the, you have a remote, get it going on high. If it's cold, just have it go in the other direction so that the air goes up rather than down. And what that does, it has the same effect as what they have in the hydroelectric plants, you know, they have spinning copper in the hydroelectric plants, and they also have magnets, and with a combination of magnets and the, and the copper spinning, it generates electricity that will send it hundreds and hundreds of miles. Well, you're not making electricity, you don't want to make electricity this way, you want just the frequencies that come off. And the reason for that is, is that when you bend the, I was talking about the copper wire, the energy going in one direction, but when you bend it in half, now it's going in two directions. And then when you twist it, it's, the copper wire is in constant contact with itself. So now that those ions are, are kind of bouncing against each other and it creates a minor amount of frequencies um, right there. It's not enough to, to accomplish what we're talking about. You want to put this on ceiling fans or record players or, or on the, the, the ceiling fans you can buy or to hang them down, you know, use the looped end from a, a wardrobe that you can hang clothing on, you know, there's metal racks and put a fan on oscillating so that the so that the, the copper is moving and not moving and moving and not moving and that will generate a lot of fractal what are called fractal frequencies fractal means different sizes one one is a different size than the other and these are different size frequencies that you generate and they go out and they go through mountains walls and windows so even if you only have one ceiling fan this will uh, work for uh, all of them all the rooms in your house, plus it will go out outside your house to your neighbors. I had a neighbor who, uh, or two neighbors, husband and wife, and they would argue all the time. And I set one of these this stuff on a record player, turned it on. I would hear him. I mean, when I go outside, half the time I'd go out, I'd hear him argument before I did this. From that moment forward, in the next two years, they argued twice. And then, it recently, a few months ago, they started arguing again. I heard them like three times in the space of a couple months, right? Well, in the meantime, I had two more of these, these big plates, 12-inch 12, 12 plates with 300 millimeters, and I put it on a ceiling fan, and it's, it's cleared it up. They're not arguing anymore. It's because we're all being irritated by all the, all the frequencies that we're being subjected to from our smart meters, and, and et cetera. Our, all of us, me, you, everybody, it's getting cloudy, cloudy brain syndrome from the fluid not moving rapidly enough. So if we do this, we can make ourselves, our whole family, you know, if you've got little children who are, who are artistic or have ADD and they're having trouble sleeping, they're keeping you awake and, and you're at your wit's end. Or if you have a, a, a senior member in your family, in your home, who's, who's dealing with uh, dementia, you notice they call it sundowner's disease? Why is that? Because, because it's clean after they've slept all night, and then it starts clouding up, clouding up. And so by doing this, you're going to get it really clean, and you're going to assist them. I'm not saying this is a cure for any of these things, but what I'm saying is that you're going to feel so much better, so much better. 
So if you have a bunch of ceiling fans, I invite you to put them on all your ceiling fans because the more you have, the merrier it is. And you'll be helping yourself, your family, and your neighbors, and your community. So thank you so much for listening. Um, once again, if you're interested in my books, you can get more information about them at the links down below to support what I'm doing. really appreciate that. And uh, if you subscribe, uh, YouTube will let you know when I create more videos. And, and you can check my channel and you can watch more videos there. Well, thank you so much. I hope we can make this world a better place. It works for people <clears throat> who are dealing with, like I say, neurodivergent, um, you know, whatever... Any brain, every brain is getting cloudy. Cloudy with a chance of rain. <laughs> so, so uh, we, or maybe a chance of no rain. You know, I don't know what, what the bright term would be. But let's, let's, uh, let's let this catch on. You know? Well, thank you for watching. You take care, and God bless.